Hello, I'm Martha Glennie, Jewelry Professor at George Brown College in Toronto. My videos look at different jewelry forms, items. I'm offering tips, tools, and suggestions that work for me. So I brought my flat sanded piece to the lathe and I'm going to be using a uh, rock hard gray star lap. This one looks so white like this because it's a brand new one. So we'll see how I may make out with the brand new one. Sometimes the ones that are worn in a little bit um, actually do a better job. They've built up a certain amount of compound, but I'm going to give it a shot. So to put this on, sometimes you have to make a little bit of a hole there first. Um, but this one, I'm just going to put it on. You want to make sure that it's straight up and down. And I'm just going to put that on. Don't do it too tightly. Sometimes you can't get it off. Okay, there we are. And I might just turn it to make sure that it's straight up and down. There we are. Here's my piece. And of course, what am I going to have? I'm going to have my safety glasses with me. And also, I'm using Graystar. I will have my mask. Now, for the purpose of doing the video, I'm not going to wear my mask because you wouldn't be able to hear anything that I'm saying or it would sound like I was underwater. So, we're going to just put this aside, but I always wear my mask when I'm polishing as an extra um, health and safety process. Okay, these on. Now, before we actually start, I want to show you how we're going to get this on and off because that's always an issue, isn't it? I mean, here's this little piece and I know it's supposed to go on there. And sometimes that's what people do. They put it here and they go like that. The problem is when you do that, you're always leading with an edge. And what do you think's gonna happen to that edge? Yeah, it's going to get rounded. So what we actually want to do is we want to line ourselves up. We want to line ourselves up with the flat of this. And I'm usually using one eye when I do that. And I'm going to slide this on and then let it go and then just catch it when it falls. Let's see that again. I'm going to slide it on and catch it. Now, one of the things you never, never, never want to do is this, is put the piece on halfway because this edge right here will make grooves across your work. And you sure don't want that because you've worked very hard to make this a perfectly flat and smooth surface. All right, now let's have that, let's clear our, clear the decks here. This is uh, Gray Star, so I've got my Gray Star handy. And I'm going to start the lathe and off we go. So because this is a new one, I'm going to put a little bit more compound on. Normally, I would test it first. And you could use, I'm using a gray star lap, but you could use a Tripoli lap. It's whatever suits your fancy. So I'm going to line this up. And there we go. And that's about as long as I can have it on there. Um, it starts to get quite hot. So you can notice where I'm using the lap. I'm using it in that same kind of sweet spot that we think about using our wheel buff on the outside. And if you get it too far to the back, it'll pull your piece away. And if you get it too far up here, it'll pull your piece. So really right in here is where we want to be using it. Now, I'm putting a little more compound on than I normally would, as I said. That's just to kind of get this worked in. Carefully put it on. Keep it, you see, I keep it moving. And it's hot. So, one of the things you can do, if it's too hot for you, these are called finger cots. And they're leather, and they just go on your finger like that and they help uh, protect your fingers from the heat. 
Now the downside is that sometimes you can't, you're not sensitive enough to what's happening on the lap and you can't tell where you're pressing. But it's a good alternative and it's a safe alternative. Gloves are not a good idea. Gloves present a safety hazard in that what if something catches? Well, with these little finger cops, they just do that and you're fine. Whereas a glove could pull your hand in uh, to the machine and believe me, the machine will win. Okay, so let's give this a try and see if I can be happy with holding it. And I have to have a little look here, see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna put it on that way. Now you see how much longer I can keep that on there. But I can only use one finger because otherwise it's uh, gonna be doing the leather. Let's try that again. So now I guess the question for you becomes, you're thinking, well, when will I know that it's done? Well, you know when it's done, when all the sanding lines, which are gonna be straight, by the way, straight and parallel, are removed, and all you see are lap lines, and the lap lines are gonna be slightly curved because they're gonna follow the uh, form. So actually what I'm going to do is getting a little hard to tell which might be uh, gray star lines and which might be uh, sanding lines. I'm going to put it on its point and then I know that anything that follows that is going to be lap lines. There's something that happens, I've seen happen, is that when people aren't using enough compound on a lap, you end up with a, a shiny surface, but that shiny surface is just showing shiny sanding lines. So that's not what we're after. We're actually after cutting through the lap lines, or the sanding lines with, lap, with the lap. And in point of fact, it shouldn't be shiny from the lap. It should be dull. There we go, that's coming. I see it has, it has some little bit deeper sanding lines. I'm gonna put a little more compound on. As I said, normally I wouldn't be putting it on quite so often, but because it's a new lap, we've gotta get a good surface built up there. There we go. I'm almost there. That's a good idea, putting it on the corner like this. It really lets me see quite easily where, oh, just one or two more times. So this takes a little while um, you know, you, can, you have to be patient. You can't rush it, that's for sure. Almost there. Uh, I keep saying that, right? Well, we just have to do it till it's done. That's all there is to it. Got one stubborn little line there. So, you know, sanding paper, the grits aren't all the same size. Unless you're buying the very super fancy sandpapers, sometimes there's pieces of the abrasive that are a little bigger than other times. And then they'll make a little deeper mark. And this is what you start to see when you're uh, doing your lapping. So I'm pressing, uh, you can't really see that, but I am pressing. Uh, if you press too hard, it will tend to catch and come out of your hand. 
So you have to press hard enough, but not too hard. Oh yes, it's one of those things that's hard to uh, teach, but you have to experience it. And I guess I would say if nothing's happening, you're probably not pressing hard enough. Ah, looking excellent. Okay, let's turn that off. So, just as earlier, I talked about that there's a number of pathways that we could use for sanding. There's also a number of pathways that we could use here to get to our end result. And the one that I have found that's most effective is to take our hard laps through different compounds and take our steps up to rouge. However, you could go from a gray star lap to a gray star wheel buff. Then you could go, that's a pretty big jump to go from a gray star wheel buff to a rouge wheel buff. So you could go to a gray star lap or a red rouge lap or green rouge. Um, and then do a rouge buff. But we're going to do something a little different. We are going to do um, a luster bar. Luster bar rock hard. Now, luster bar is a compound that fits in the middle. It fits in the middle between our Tripoli e and Grey Star and our rouges. And so with these flat sheets, which are very particular to do, they're not very forgiving, I like to particularly use luster bar as an intermediary step. So let's see what that's going to do. And again, this is a brand new one because the other luster bar laps are uh, medium. And so they're not the rock hard. All right. There we are. Here's my luster bar. Here's my little finger protector, which actually is doing quite a good job. Uh, really, the only problem is it's quite hot when I try to hold it in my other hand to have a good look at it. Okay, I've got my glasses back on, and here we go. So I'm looking, what I'm looking for here, I'm looking at my lines, and for my first couple of ways, I wanna go across those lines. That's looking good, but it needs a little more compound. Whew, and it's hot. It's a little smeary, which makes it hard to see, but that's actually what I want because then I know that there's compound there that's actually doing the work. Carefully slide it on. Okay, that's coming. I shouldn't have to spend as long doing this because the biggest step is from the sanding uh, to the gray star. Yowie. Hot, hot, hot. The way to control that heat is just uh, don't leave it on as long. Even though this leather can take it, uh, just don't leave it on the, the lap as long. Do it more like this. There we go. And then it's not going to get as hot and then it will uh, cool off more quickly. Now I notice there's a little something up in this corner right here. So I'm going to put my finger right in that corner um, to apply a little extra pressure there. See if I can get rid of that. Sometimes you find that, well, things aren't going well, maybe it was too big a step, 
um, you see you drop it, it goes flying out of your hands, and you need to go back a step. That's quite common when we're first learning how to use the lap. And uh, you just have to accept that it's uh, part of the process and be okay with it. And even experienced, woohoo! Even experienced polishers find that. Every piece we come to is just a little bit different. There, now it's coming. The lap is a little bit of a tricky one to become familiar with. Um, a lot of uh, new, people who are new to the laps, they find they keep, the piece keeps coming off, flying out of their hands. But it is such a useful tool. I really encourage you to stick with it and um, because you want to be able, as a designer maker, to create flat surfaces if you want to and have them be a high polish. All right, that just needed, that's right, that just needed a little more on there. I think, I'll tell you what, I am going to put another one on there so I can balance this on my, uh, on the leather. And I can even put it on these fingers too. That's almost there. Now I'm doing this in real time. I'm giving this to you in real time uh, because uh, I want you to really have a feeling that this doesn't just happen. We have to do it. We have to look. We have to react. And we need to finish one step before we go on to the next one. Okay, that's good. So, turn this off. Now, I, I could, if I wanted to, uh, do a luster bar wheel buff, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to go to a red, um, a rouge lap, and I'm going to actually try, um, oops, there go my little fingers. Let's put those just down here for a minute. Um, I'm going to do a green one and uh, because generally speaking we use green rouge with silver or with white metals and we use red rouge with yellow metals but I don't hold it hard and fast to that you know because if you're not getting the job done that you want with the green rouge then try the red rouge or vice versa Really, th keep in mind that what we're looking for is that end goal, which is a beautiful mirror. So this one, we'll see how we make out. This is a medium one, but that's the only one I have in the green rouge. Uh, so let's give it a try and see if it's going to do the job for us, or whether I have to go uh, to the red rouge that I have in a rock hard one. This is also a smaller one, you'll notice. So we're doing a couple differences here. Uh, we'll see. Experimentation, that's what it's all about. 
All right, here we go. Now remember, because this is a softer wheel, there's a chance that it's uh, not going to reach the middle very well. Let's have a look. Ooh, that's actually doing a pretty nice job. I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep going. Ah. What is it we say? Ooh la la. That's why we wear an apron, folks. I could catch it in my lap. That is looking pretty good. I'm a happy camper. Now at this point, I want to start moving it around a bit. Um, if I see any coarser lines that are going across, I'm definitely going to go this way. But I'm also going to um, change it up so that change direction, and you notice I still keep moving it, just so that there aren't any patterns that uh, are created in the piece, in the silver. And that's looking excellent except for one little area up there. So I'm going to make sure that my finger goes right up to the top there and I can press extra hard on that area. Turn it, rotate it. It's coming. So what do you think my next step would be after this? I'll let you think about that for a minute while I work here. So have you come up with an answer as to what my next step would be? While you were thinking about that, I've got this exactly where I want it. Nice, flat, no ripples, no flaws, no um, deep, coarser lines. So if you said that you, we want to go to a wheel buff, you would be absolutely correct. Because this is highly reflective, but I can see curved lap lines. So we want to see if we can get rid of those and refine them. And we'll do that by using wheel buffs. Now I've got a couple choices here. This one is bigger. It's also softer. This one is smaller in diameter because it's been worn away and there are the stitches right there. So it's a bit harder. Generally speaking, harder is better for flat surfaces, okay? The harder it is, it's more like a lap, it's better for flat surfaces. But it may leave its own lines because it's a little bit harder. This one, which is softer, is going to refine the surface more, but we'll have to watch if we use this one that it doesn't um, create a very typical polish uh, buffing flaw, which are very tiny, tiny, tiny drag lines, or um, sometimes we call it orange peel. It looks like tiny little dots all over the surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this one first and see what kind of a surface I can get with that. You can see it already has some compound on, so I'm not going to add any more compound. And I don't need my little finger cots anymore because it's not going to get as hot here. 
So I'm holding it in a pinch grip as always. And before I start, I want to identify, okay, there's my lap lines that are going this way. So for my first little bit, I want to work across those lap lines. Okay, that's definitely refining the surface, but it is leaving its own set of gray lines. So before I spend too much time there, because we want to buff as little time as possible to get a good result. And I'm going to put the bigger, softer one on, and I'm going to see if I can refine the wheel, the green rouge wheel buff lines uh, to make them less noticeable. It really is um, a difficult skill to keep refining and refining and refining until we have no lines at all. So a little um, tip I have for you is that if you can't get rid of the buffing lines, then just make sure that they all go in one direction that you don't have some going this way and some going this way, and they will be less noticeable if they're all going in one direction. Okay, let's see what we can do with this one. I'm, I'm being very careful to bring the work flat to the surface, not to lead with a point or lead with an edge or come off that way i'll round everything and over polish it if i do that so it may be that i need to put my fingernail or my finger up over that top edge so that it doesn't catch and that happens okay but folks if that happens you have to have a good look and make sure that there aren't any nicks, there aren't any bangs, and if there are, <sighs> yep, you have to go back and fix them. Now sometimes what you can do to help get rid of uh, those lines is to start pressing more lightly because that's also then a refining process, right? You're not pressing as hard, you're not adding more compound, so that in essence, your wheel buff becomes uh, less coarse. Now I'm just, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, I am being successful in lightening up those lines, but I also am having a little bit of a problem with the uh, compound sticking and that's what I'm mucking with right now so I'm sort of sliding the compound off let's see if I can get it off on the bottom edge and then I'm going to say I think I think oh my goodness tiny bit Oh, there's looking good. There we go. That's looking great. I do have lines. Um, if I had an even softer buff, or maybe this would be a place where you could try a chamois buff, chamois leather, uh, and they also, you can use compound on it for buffing. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty content with that. Of course, I'm going to wash it, and then I'm going to have a very, very good look at it and really see if it is done and not just have it be wishful thinking. <laughs> Believe me, I'm wishing that it's done. I want to talk, uh, before we wrap up these talking about flat sheets, I want to talk about a sheet with cutouts in it. Now, that's, it's not often that we have a shape, actually, that is... Uh, completely flat without any breaks in it. 
We might have square holes cut in it like this one is, or you might have pierced lines in it, or very complex pierced work in it. And how do you handle that? Well, as far as the lapping goes, you handle it exactly the same. Perhaps I might be a little more conscious of uh, rotating the form on the lap so that we don't build in any, in any directions. But where the real care comes is when you come to the wheel buff. Because, let's look at this, have a little theory moment. So if we're using a wheel buff that's like this, the wheel buff is going to come along. I was wondering if I had a pointer. I guess I don't have a pointer here. Um, the wheel buff is going to come along and it's going to fall into that hole and then it's going to come up the other side and then it's going to fall into that hole and come up the other side. I think you can imagine what's going to happen, can't you? Everything is going to get rounded. And it's always the um, edge that it comes out of, whoopsie, uh, that is going to be the most rounded. And even worse than that, if there can be something worse than that, is that corners like this, the corner drags out up on top of the metal and makes a groove that points away from the corner. So that certainly puts a wrench in the works, doesn't it? How you deal with that is to use this harder buff, okay? Not a softer one, because this, because it's harder, it's not going to go down in there as much. And I, this is a case where I might uh, go to that four over zero paper, emery paper, and take it up to a higher sanding so that I don't, maybe I don't start at Gray Star. Maybe I start at Luster Bar. Do you remember me saying there's lots of pathways to get to our result? And you want to start experimenting so you find the ones that work for you. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, buffing here to give you an idea because the other important thing is that you want to. Um, keep changing the direction and we might be using the corner of our buff a little bit more so that we can isolate certain areas. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to come over here to the side and I'm just going to do that side and I'm going to do this side so I'm not coming into the area where those cutouts are at all yet. Okay, now, what about in here? I mean, I do have to get in there. Well, I might put a little, little compound right on that edge and bring it up at, at an angle like this to see if I can isolate going down the center there. And very important, keep changing the direction or the orientation, however we want to say it. Now you're pretty safe with the rouge. I mean, I think you'd have to work very, very hard and, and buff for way too long uh, to get drags with the rouge because our rouge step is the quickest one, right? So the most danger comes when we're using our polishing compound more than our buffing compound. But there's a few tips on how to do a piece that has cutouts. All right. We'll see you again tomorrow, folks.